So we're gonna do a cut in half of this, this boot. So I thought it'd be fun just to do a quick unboxing just to get my initial impressions of it um, before we do the cut in half, because well, why not? It's fun to do, I like doing it. So what is this boot? If you go to Iron Boots, iron-boots.com, it goes into a little bit about Iron Boots. Iron Boots started in 2015 in the ooh, Guzhou. I better look that up, how to say that. Guangzhou. Guangzhou, Guangzhou, China. So Iron Boots started in 2015 in Guangzhou, China, and now our small studio, now we are a small studio with six folks in total. Our brand owner, boot designer, and, and maker Kai is also a boot enthusiast, and he started to make his own boots after he realized there was no such boot in the market that he could reach reach his bars on all fronts. We started in China and later, later launched in Japan. We have also got lots of funds. Canada, Australia, Europe. We have received a lot of orders and com compliments from customers all around the world, even from some boot makers. I love their logo, first of all, and it looks like they make quite a few really good looking boots. They're definitely more on like the high end, uh, like dress looking ones. But the thing that I really like about what I've seen from them in the past is they have a, a lot of really unique glass, a lot of like military inspired, inspired glass. They have one that's in the months and last. It's a really simple, like little service boot. And I really want to get my hands on one of those. You know, they're, they're pricey boots. They're, you know, they're anywhere from looks like 650 to 750. Looks like they have some denim as well. And I, I think they make a lot of the made to order stuff. Like you can kind of order, uh, custom things, I think. And then their Instagram is ironboots, at ironboots underscore USA, for the USA version anyway. There's four main ways that sneakers are constructed, and the more of those ways they have in a single shoe, the more durable they are. And there's also some inherent flaws to not having them. For instance, this pair, without the sidewall stitch, you can see it's opening up right there, right at that flex point. Without the Blake stitch, as you go to resole your shoes, there's no stitch there holding it together, making it really difficult to resole. There's also cup soles, like this one we just torn off, where if they don't have it, a lot of times they start to delaminate and fall apart, especially with this style of construction. And then there's gluing. And if it's not a strong type of glue, you literally just tear it apart. So when we were designing the Smugs, it was like, let's just do all of them. Let's combine all of them into one. So that's why we have a sidewall stitch. It's glued, it has the Blake stitch, and it's also a cup sole. And on top of that, we use the boot thickness leather. If you don't know what SMUGS stands for, it stands for sneakers made using good shit. Simple as that. And that's what we try to do. We try to make a sneaker built like a boot that you can actually wear like a sneaker, but has the qualities of boot. They launch on the 25th and early access opens up before if you're on the limited edition email list. So sign up to that below. And there's limited quantities, especially this, this color I've been wearing. Look how good these look. This natural, I think it's gonna sell out fast. So check them out below. So that's Iron Boots and it's another one of these brands that's kind of bucking the stigma of cheap Chinese made footwear, you know, because it's it's a rightfully deserved moniker or like stigma because so much of the cheap stuff does come from China, but it's a it's a so it's an easy logical to jump to say everything made in China is just absolutely terrible. But in all reality, it's just like any other country, the stuff that's made really terribly here in the US or stuff that's made really well here in the US. I always lean on lean towards supporting the US just cuz a little more patriotic than some. I like supporting the U.S., uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't support other countries and, and really show off what they're doing and appreciate other countries and their craftsmanship and, and how they do things. The two aren't mutually exclusive, in my opinion. Well, that's pretty much it. Let's, let's unbox them and see what's what. But first, actually, we gotta do another mini unboxing because we just got a box, a box of knives from Blade HQ in the mail. So what I'm gonna do is I think we're gonna do an unboxing of these in another unboxing video. So we got a couple other things, just random stuff we want to unbox and kind of show you guys. So I'm just going to choose one randomly out. So what am I unboxing my unboxing box with? My usual unboxing knife, the little Gerber that I usually have on my hip at all times. Do a little fish around and decide on one knife to pull out. That feels like a big one. Ooh, what do we got? We have a Microtech Knife, never compromise. Setting the standard for precision cutlery since 1994. 100% made in the USA. Uh, for over 25 years, Microtech has been working to build a strong, long-lasting tradition of innovation and quality in each knife and leaves its, leaves its facility. In a world of ever-changing technology, we strive to ensure customer... Okay, we get it. Good stuff. And this is their Ultratech D-A-D-slash-E Blade HQ exclusive in neon yellow button 
Magna cut stonewash standard. Oh, you guys, getting into knives is dangerous. <laughs> I've been waiting to get into the knives forever, and now we finally have the opportunity to. And so, it's so this is so fun. A little mini unboxing for you. Ooh, the packaging is clean. Get this moved out of the way. Back, ah, look at that, that's some nice packaging. That's one thing some of these boot companies could learn a little bit from, upgrading their packaging a little bit. Nice little eagle claw. Very patriotic. I love American brands. They're always so over the top. It's so funny. Oh, is this a gravity knife? Oh, sick. I chose the right knife. This is so sick. I love these knives. You're like, I don't care. Show us the boots. This is cool. Leave me alone. Caution, sharp edge. Oh. Knives are so fine. I don't care what anyone says. Okay, so it looks like we got a little like a uh, glass breaker on the end there. And then we got a little action here. Okay, it's spring loaded, so I think it's, I think it's, I think, I think it's like a, a gravity knife, let's see. Oh, watch me just cut my hand off. Oh, shit. Are you kidding me? I thought these were illegal. Oh. Ooh, that does, that comes out quick too. Okay, I stopped it, so that. <laughs> This is so sick. I thought you couldn't have these. I thought these were illegal. Are you kidding me? I did not know that these were, you could buy these. Anyway, this knife is sick. So check these out, be linked in the description. A little Blade HQ exclusive with Ultratech. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm, this is how I'm excited to get into knives because it's, I just, you know, I, I, I like knives. I've always liked knives. I've just never gotten into them in like a real sense, you know, because I just lose them all the time. I was raised with like, uh, you know, your typical Swiss Army knife. I always had a buck knife for hunting. I always had Leatherman's, you know, so I've always had like, I've had your standard knives. Just nothing like this, what the heck? Are you kidding me? This is so fun. That action is pretty stiff though. I guess it has to be, but it'll probably loosen up. It's like those tactile turn pins. They're pretty stiff at first, and then you get them really broken in. They, they, they're actually really smooth. <laughs> this, uh, honestly, this knife is about as exciting as this boot. Don't tell Ticho, but this thing is so fun. Crazy. I gotta put that away. Okay. I don't know if that what that says. I don't even know if it's upside right side up or upside down. I don't even know what these look like. I think I know what they are, but I don't know. So let's see what's inside the box. Ooh, you Ooh, know I love a good black boot. Dang, these things are handsome boots. Let's see what we've got for packaging in here. Cheng, oh, is that the name of the boot? Is that the style of the boot or, or that the name of the guy? I don't think, I think the other, the owner's name was something else, wasn't it? Kai. Cheng. I don't know what it is. Um, so there's that. Pretty minimal packaging. I do like the big old lettering on top here though. Really nice foil stamp. So to the boots, look at these. Got a nice rough out. It's a true, it's a real like rough out too. It's not suede. You can see the grain on the inside here. And tell you what, <laughs> these don't smell that much like leather. They smell a lot like glue. So what do we have here? Looks like this is a, a brogued toe, I believe is the right word, where you've got these these holes. Broging, broging, that's what it's called, right? See, I'm out of, I, I'm, I'm slowly getting into the dress boot world, but yeah, I think it's called broging. Broging at the toe, a very traditional pattern of the upper. And, um, I think Ticho asked me for the size and then I got sick and I ignored the entire world for a week. So I don't know what size these are, but dang, those are some good looking boots. God, they're finished well too. That's the thing about these, these Chinese brands. They, because there's that stigma, they really have to go on above and beyond to prove the worth and prove the value. Because you can see we got the super Dr. Soul super soles, super grips, what are they called? I like these soles. I think they're really nice looking. They're pretty hard soles. I guess we get the durometer tester out. 80, 85. So pretty hard rubber. Um, as for the leather thickness, three. That baby's thick. Three millimeters thick. 
Got the three speed hooks. God, I like these boots. I love a blacked out boot. And uh, like I said, the, the, the stitch density is really, really tight. You know, I'm more from the work boot world, and so stitch density never really means, never really meant much to me, but I get it for these dressier boots. Like it definitely gives it a lot cleaner look, you know, and pull off these, uh, these whites. You know, it's a very subtle difference, but you can definitely tell the difference in, in aesthetic that it causes. And for dress boots, I get it. It's, it's nice It's nice that they look really nice. And the thing that's crazy to me with these boots is the, the welt stitching is always really, really good. The welt stitching is nearly perfect. And even on the bottom side, you can see how good those stitchings are. Stitching up the stitchings. I, and I also just love these outsoles because, you know, how functional is this really? Probably not, <laughs> not at all. But I just like, I like that like intentional design where you have like these little pivot points and it looks like it's intentional even if it's, even if it's not that functional. I like the idea of making it intentional. I'm trying to think what else you might want to know. It's not lined, unless it is lined and I just, it's just actually suede. But I think it's, I think it's unlined through the shaft. What about the, the vamp here? Got a lining in the vamp. Dang, that's a handsome looking boot. The thing I like about it is it's it's kind of like a, it's not it's not so dressy that I wouldn't wear it. You know, not this huge long pointy toe and like really delicate and almost feminine looking. This is a lot more masculine, a little more bulk to it, a little bulbous toe, toe cap, nice big heel with that. You know, I always like the more like uh, cowboy slant heel here, dogger. I don't know. There's people care a lot about the names of profiles of heels, I just forget what they are because I don't care that much. I know, you know, what I'm saying is like those logger heels, they look good. I like, I just like the slanted heels a little bit more, more cowboy heel, especially on a dress boot. They're tall too. It's like a, see how tall it is compared to these six inch whites. Probably more of like a seven inch boot. Yeah, it's like a seven inch boot. Oh yeah. That's a cool boot. Pretty handsome. And it is like a, this is a dress boot that I would actually wear. You know, I, I got these shoes for myself. Um, I think it was for like 750,000 subscriber mark. I always try to buy myself a pair of Sagaras um, from Indonesia, uh, just for fun. You know, it's a little thing I do for myself, but you can see the difference in toe. You know, I just haven't worn these a ton because I, I just feel silly wearing a really pointy toe on anything but when, when I'm like dressed up to go to the symphony or go down to, support the family's church endeavors or whatever I need to dress up for and it's not very often so I just end up forgetting about them and I don't wear them whereas these you could you know you could dress these in a lot of different ways and pull them off at least for me you know I wouldn't feel as weird dressing these down as I would a really pointy toe so before my voice gives out let's try these things on and hopefully my voice will come back at some point because I've recorded like six videos with a really shaky voice oh I also do like these black eyelets I love a black boot. this looks nice so, let's try them on, let's see how they fit. Okay, let's try them on. Wearing the uh, NDCs, we just did an unboxing video, not unboxing, a six month, up, six month year update on. It's kind of crazy how much these shined up. They're so shined up that I, I <laughs> like they're a little too shined up. I might hit them with like a little steel wool because they're a little too like eye catching. They're not bad, I guess, just me being weirdly self-conscious about wearing the shiniest boots in the entire world. What size is this? What they send me? I don't see any size markers on the inside. I didn't see it on the box either. Oh yeah it is. Nine I think it's I think it's nine and a half D. So let's see how the nine and a half D fits. Yeah, come on. I gotta get some new laces in this this boot. Where's my new favorite toy. Let's cut those off. Don't stress out. I'm not going to cut the cord in. Woo! You can see how much I haven't been cleaning those. See that junk in there? <laughs> she goes to show you. So we didn't spend them all day shining those things up because there's a bunch of junk still in them. My stained white Nike socks. Okay, moment of truth. Nine and a half D from Iron Boots. How she fit. Oof, might be right on actually. Obviously, your boy's got a case of the lads always, with every boot. I think dress boots, they also like to lace them really, really, really tight. Or like, they like the spacing to be 
really narrow because it looks better or looks more finished. Ooh, I like that last. Holy cow. I might be able to go down half a size. Dang, those look nice though. Yeah, I would for sure wear these. It's like this is like, this is my kind of dress boot. Something that's a little bit more substantial, has a little more girth to it. Cause my let's see the ball of my foot is there. I could probably go down a half size. Especially for a dress boot, it's not like I'm gonna be working in these. Cause they look pretty big. Okay, I guess let me throw the other one. Yeah, these are nice looking boots. I hadn't really thought about like a dress boot being kind of a hybrid of like a more heritage and military and dress and like ruggedy style combined. Cause that's kind of what these are. They look nice. I like them a lot. Yeah, that's something I'd wear to Symphony for sure. So check out Stitch Down Podcast, tech, check out Ticho's Instagram and all, all the things that they do. We'll put links every, to everything below. Check out Iron Boots. Thanks for supporting these unboxing videos because you know, I'll, I'll even get out of bed when I'm sick to come do these because they're so fun. You know, it's like, it doesn't get much more fun than this. You know what I mean? And this. So thank you guys for all your support and supporting this channel, the Rose Anvil 2 channel. <laughs> this is the Rose Anvil 2 channel, Rose Anvil main channel. And we have our scratch and dent sale going on right now where we have just tons of hides that have lots of flaws in them. So we set them aside and we get lots of parts that have little flaws and we didn't notice before we cut them. And then we put those aside. And then a couple times a year, we just do a big scratch and dent sale and use all those hides that have little flaws in them. Use all the pieces that have little flaws in them, discount them. It allows us to reduce our waste, allows you guys to get products for a cheaper price, allows us to have a good time doing a big sale. And it's, it's just a good way to support the business. So thank you guys for everything you guys do. See ya.